All right, real talk. I've been doing this software engineering thing for almost five years now, and this job is way different than I thought it would be. Way different. I spent so much time stressing out about wrong things. I have something to share with you. Everyone is freaking out about AI, ChatGPT, Cursor, Cloud Code, asking, should I even bother learning to code? But the reality is you can't prepare for everything. When I started coding, I thought I was entering a stable and well-paying tech career. I had my learning plan, I shared it in my previous video. I knew which languages to focus on, everything seemed predictable, but I couldn't have predicted that AI would suddenly be writing code alongside me or that the tools I would rely on would change every few months. New AI tools are dropping constantly in 2024. I was coding using Copilot. Now in 2025, I'm using Cursor and Cloud Code. Now the JavaScript ecosystem changes faster than I can keep up with it. Frameworks that I learned last year might be irrelevant this year. It is what it is, but don't be scared. Good engineers aren't getting replaced by AI. We are just getting better tools. It's like when Photoshop just came out, people thought that graphic designers are cooked. Instead, they just started making way cooler stuff. Same with us, with engineers. I use all these AI tools as um, assistants. For example, in code, I'm asking them to write boilerplate code for me, but I still need to understand what's happening to review it to debug make sure it actually works ai can't do everything for you it can't understand your company's weird business rules or it can't sit in meetings instead of you it can't argue about your deadlines and it definitely can't figure out why your code works perfectly on your machine but breaks in the production every friday at 3 p.m right so the reality is that you're gonna have have to learn constantly in this field. You have to keep up with all these technologies. Sometimes it's exhausting, but that's just the reality of tech. If you actually enjoy figuring out new stuff and don't mind feeling a little bit confused half of the time, you'll be fine. And speaking about feeling confused, I want to share another thing with you. I wish I knew that programming is mostly debugging and reading other people's code. I thought that I would be building cool apps from scratch all day long, but nope. Maybe only 30% of my time is uh, writing new code. The rest I'm figuring out why something is broke or trying to understand the code someone wrote three years ago with zero comments. And that's just the technical stuff. You'll spend so much time on non-coding tasks, meetings, sprint planning, daily stand-ups, retrospectives, architecture reviews. This isn't complaint, this is the reality and actually it leads to something crucial for your career growth, your soft skills. I wish I knew that soft skills actually matter more than I thought. I used to live in some kind of lava land thinking that as a developer I would just talk to my computer all day, do my tasks, build apps quietly and that's it. But nope, to grow in your career you're gonna have to talk a lot. During meetings you'll need to explain technical stuff to people who have no idea what you are talking about. Your documentation has to be clear enough that someone else can understand understand your code later. On code reviews, you are not just checking for bugs, you are giving a feedback without making people feel stupid. You're gonna have to explain your decisions. Sometimes you'll have to defend why you did something in a certain way. You'll be involved in a project planning where you'll be estimating how long features are gonna take and explaining the trade-offs between different approaches. You will work with product managers who will change their mind every week and sometimes you'll have to say no to requests that you get. You have to do that in a way that doesn't make everyone hate you. In the end of the day you need to be someone who people actually like and want to work with. So yeah, sometimes you are 
people skills matter more than how well you code. And speaking of working with people, I'm gonna be honest, I hate networking. Just word itself makes me cringe, but in tech it's actually super important. Networking isn't about being fake or using people, it's really just about building genuine relationships with people who are into the same stuff as you. Like for example, my last job, I got it because my friend recommended me and that's it. No endless months of interview process, no grinding lead code for months. I understand that networking isn't for everyone and if you are like me and talking to strangers feels weird to you just start small um, join local tech meetups even if you just show up and listen at first contribute to open source projects comment thoughtfully on linkedin posts uh, follow developers you admire follow galini codes <laughs> Okay, I'm joking, but I would be flattered if you did. The whole point is just to be helpful and actually care about what other people are building. You'd be surprised how many doors open when you are just genuinely interested in helping others and sharing what you are learning. I'm like a pretty shy person and I was super unconfident when I just started. It would have been so nice to know that feeling that you don't know enough or feeling like you are a fraud is normal. Imposter syndrome is incredibly common even among experienced developers. Uh, senior developers, tech leads, everyone went for it. I still question my skills when I can solve a bug for hours or when I have no clue how to build a new feature. But now now I understand that feeling lost means you are learning and the difference between junior and senior developers isn't that seniors never get stuck. They just been to this situation so many times that they know how to get unstuck faster. I still have that feeling that everyone else knows what they are doing, they are so smart, they are better than me and I'm just pretending here. I just learned to live with that feeling. There is always gonna be someone smarter, someone better than you and that's completely normal. What matters is how you react to that feeling. This fear of being behind brings me to one of the most important advice I can give you. Asking questions is normal and actually really valuable, especially when you're starting out. I wish I'd be more open about it, but my shy personality didn't let me ask questions. I wasted weeks trying to figure out some things alone because I was embarrassed to ask. I thought it would make me look incompetent, but you know what actually made me look incompetent? Taking three times longer to complete tasks because I was too shy to ask for help. I know it's hard, but ask as many questions as possible, even if you think they are stupid. Most of people actually want to help and those stupid questions usually aren't stupid. Often everyone else is wondering the same thing, but just too scared to ask. Everyone thinks, oh, I'll figure out on my own. If you don't know how to start the conversation, uh, here's the best format that I learned. I'm trying to do X, I've tried Y and Z, but I'm getting this error. Could you please help me understand what's happening? This shows you've made an effort, it gives context and make it easy for someone to help you. But what if you don't have supportive people to ask? When I was looking for my first dev job, I thought I had to know everything listed in the job description. I mean, like everything. I was stressed out thinking, oh, I don't know this and I don't know that. And the list felt endless. But here's the truth. Most of job descriptions are wish lists not checklists. The fun fact that a lot of time the people who are writing them don't even fully understand what they are asking for. That's how we get those memes junior developer with 10 years of experience required or job posts listing every programming language ever made. Feels like someone just copy pasted everything. You definitely don't need to know everything but having some guidance makes huge difference. At my first 
first job, let's say I didn't have the most supportive team. Everyone was super independent, which is cool, but it basically meant that I was on my own to figure everything out. Sometimes I would spend days researching how to do something that a senior developer could explain me in five minutes. If you are starting out, try to find someone who can point you into the right direction. It could be a mentor at work that would be great. Someone you meet at a meetup, um, just a developer online who is willing to answer questions sometimes. And don't try to learn everything at once. Pick one thing like React or Python, whatever, and actually get good at it. You can always learn more stuff later. If you are looking for a structured way to learn, I would recommend checking out Educative. Their interactive courses let you code along instead of just watching, which helps retain information way better. Plus, they have clear learning paths for different tech stacks. All right, last thing. Finally, don't be fooled by those fancy day in a life videos. Even mine. Some content creators love to sugarcoat the reality. I don't blame them. I definitely have those kind of days too. Actually, those perfect days are the only days when I have time and energy to film YouTube videos. That's why I post only once per month. <laughs> Don't blame me, because usually I'm completely swamped with work and I have no time to even think about filming. The reality isn't that simple and pretty. Some days your code works perfectly and other days you'll spend hours on bugs. Some days you'll have a great meetings and feel like you're making progress, but other days you will feel behind. Even with all these challenges that I mentioned, I still love this career. The problem solving, the opportunities, the the satisfaction of building something that people actually use, it's worth it. Just go with realistic expectations, focus on building both your technical and soft skills, and remember that everyone was a beginner too. If you made this far, you are the real one. I hope this video helped you get more realistic picture of software engineering. Drop like and let me know in comments what other topics you would like me to cover in next videos. And if you are just starting your journey, welcome to the club. It's gonna be challenging, but it's definitely gonna be worth it.